Recognize the member for St. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise briefly just to congratulate the government for bringing this, bringing this timely legislation to the Parliament today, the Digital Asset Business Bill, and for the Prime Minister's detailed explanation this morning. <clears throat> First of all, Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to say that I'm fully aware, even the local banks sir, and some of our business people, they still have concerns, and even in the OECS, and reservations about the risks associated with cryptocurrencies and blockchains. And there are some legitimate concerns about having businesses registered in our jurisdiction. But as the Prime Minister already said this morning, it's how well we can manage risk, but not to shy away from risk, Mr. Speaker. And to be aggressive, and to take some sort of entrepreneurial risk to develop our economy, and to diversify our economy, if we are ready to achieve an economic powerhouse in this country. And we know what is going on with the tourism industry. We read the news, we watch it, and we see the effects it's going to have not just in Antigua and Barbuda, but the wider Caribbean and other tourism destinations, such as Italy and Greece and Malta and Seychelles, and what it's going to do to our GDP. So we really have to, as a government, diversify the economy and identify services, as the Prime Minister said. Medical services, as Minister Joseph has been pioneering with the stem cell research, which is a really excellent niche industry that we have brought to Antigua, the development of light manufacturing, and additional investment, Mr. Speaker, in the agriculture sector, and self-sufficiency in the energy sector. But, Mr. Speaker, there's a need to leverage the digital economy. And the potential of this digital economy is very, very huge. We should not underestimate it. And particularly the use of cryptocurrencies. Um, recent developments in the marijuana industry, and I'm happy the Attorney General is going to bring, I think that's the next bill, the hemp bill, that we have on the order paper today. But also the marijuana industry would also have to be considered very seriously now for us to fast track Mr. AG that industry and get it off the ground as part of the entire diversification process. But we have to create serious linkages between all of these industries or sectors, I should say, in order to maximize the benefits. But getting back to the bill at hand, Mr. Speaker, you know, the risks that we have to, to endure in order to develop our economy and to diversify, more so with this COVID-19 crisis, like this cryptocurrency, blockchain, digital asset business, even our CIP, we have to step up, Mr. Prime Minister, on our CIP marketing now. Now is the time for us to be more aggressive, you know, in terms of our marketing, our promotion, because there will be high net worth individuals now that would now more than ever want to have a second passport. Not more so to travel and to come to Antigua and Barbuda to live, but to know that they have that security in case they want to. So these are areas, service industries, that are key right now, especially with the downturn that we're going to experience, at least for the near future and medium future in the tourism industry. But the ship's registry is another area. The ship's registry, I always maintain that we can do a lot more, a lot more in terms of increasing our revenues. I remember when Minister Joseph, the Honorable Member St. Mary North, was the Minister of Finance, and he developed that legislation. We were the first country in the Eastern Caribbean to have that legislation going back in the early 1990s, Mr. Member for St. Mary North, you would recall. And other islands like St. Kitts have bypassed us in terms of revenue for the ship's registry. 
we need to be a little more aggressive. Well, Sankit certainly has, Mr. Prime Minister. You can look at the revenues. And one of the problems is, Mr. Prime Minister, we have to be candid here, is that we only have one main office in Germany. We need to open up offices to register ships in the United States and in other jurisdictions. And we need to look at the legislation that Ambassador Dwight Gardner gave the Attorney General in terms of the yachting industry. It's not just the mega ships, cargo ships, and also cruise ships can be registered on our flag. Right now, we don't have the legislation to register cruise ships or yachts under the Antigua flag. The Cayman Islands has it, Bahamas have it. If you look at Carnival cruise lines, if you look at Carnival, and you look at all those big cruise ships that come to Antigua, most of them carry the Bahamian flag, and they collect a lot of tonnage Jews from those cruise ships. Anyway, let's get back to the... the Digital Asset Business Bill, which is here. This is clear demonstration, Mr. Prime Minister, of your vision, your government's vision, your forward-thinking vision for diversifying this economy. And I want to say to the public of Antigua and Barbuda, long before this COVID crisis, I recall back in 2015, I think it was, excuse me, the Prime Minister came to Cabinet and he briefed us on his meeting Ambassador Calvin, he was not ambassador at the time, and the Japanese inventor, the so-called inventor that you spoke about, and you briefed us about this industry. And some of us had our concerns, remember St. Philip's North, myself, others, about this cryptocurrency, blockchain, and the risk associated with it. And you, back then, that was four years ago, you said, gentlemen, this is an industry that we can capitalize on. It's not just like offshore banking, you know, IBCs, registry of captive insurance. This is a niche industry that we can be the leader in the Caribbean. You even spoke about creating, Mr. Prime Minister, a jogging memory of having an exchange here. You said you would have dialogue with the central bank, and Dwight Benner was alive at that time, he had not passed, about having an exchange with proper regulation, of course, and doing it in conjunction and under the supervision of the central bank. So you had that vision nearly four and a half years ago. That is correct. And we had the investor already. We had Calvin here. And I wanted to pause to thank Calvin here, Ambassador Calvin here, for he's a remarkable investor in this country. What he has done, not just with that beautiful edifice and that Canada House building, it was brick and mortar. It shows that his clear demonstration in this country and people and the government, hundreds of young people with high paying jobs, some of them making seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, ten thousand a month. Young people. Train them. The facilities, the gym facilities that he has there. We did a whole tour at the opening, I was invited. Not like what? You have to take off him. Yes, they paid. Correct. Correct. They get a flat pay. Thank you, Honorable Member St. Philip's North. And they're based upon productivity. And most of, some of them carry on 15,000. Based on how many calls they date and make. How much money and revenue they generate for the business. And they get bonuses paid for the amount of revenue. Productivity. And that should be also in the hotel and tourism sectors. And we should look in other sectors too. If we really want to, well, in government. You walk into that. <laughs> you walk into that. So we got to build out our, our um, services economy. And the Prime Minister explained this morning about diversifying into the cryptocurrency space. And I really want to say that Ambassador Calvinia has done an excellent job because it's not just in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency he's investing. He's investing in land. He has purchased the restaurant down at Jolly Beach. He's investing in hundreds of other acres of land down there, I understand, on the left-hand side, driving down there, that he bought from the defunct Abib that went bankrupt down at, uh, they were building a housing project. You know who I'm speaking about, the, down at, um, it was an offspring of, of um, Carib Seas. He bought those lands, he's going to do a project there. And he's doing many other things. 
look, he's bringing in a plane of medical supplies for the people of the country through the kind assistance from his heart. He must be com complimented. I wish we could have more corporate citizens like that that would really step up to the plate in time of need and give millions of dollars himself and Ambassador Martin Franklin. I really think that this country owes them a debt of gratitude for what they're doing in this time of need. And it's not just with the COVID. They've done it with the hurricane after it devastated Barbuda, and now they're showing their commitment and love for this country. So I think that the government, and I know the Prime Minister and his cabinet, is very appreciative, and I would like to personally thank and single out, I'm sure there are many others that are stepping up, but to single out both Calvin here, Ambassador Calvin here, and Ambassador Martin Franklin from Jumbibi. But the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, there are other developed countries that are now embracing cryptocurrencies. You have Switzerland, you have Australia, you have even Canada, and you have all these United States multinational corporations, the banks, Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they're now developing their own blockchains. So don't think, Honorable Member for St. Philip's North, through you, Mr. Speaker, that cryptocurrencies and blockchains are going to go anywhere. They're not, sir. They're not. They're here to stay. This is the future digital currency. I have a wallet. It's not a wallet in your pocket. That one is 50 years old. It only come out once a year. It's a digital wallet, Mr. Member, that you, you have on your computer, your laptop. You can go to Epicurean. You can go to any place, any supermarkets that accept it. You can pay your bills at APUA with it. You can pay your inland revenue on your phone, sir. On your phone, you do every single transaction and you move the Bitcoin. And it's not just Bitcoin you can trade in. You can trade in Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. There are about 70, 80 different cryptocurrencies now. Now, I understand it's very volatile. Bitcoin went from a high of 20,000 and now it went all the way down to 6,800. It halved two nights ago, just split like other stocks in the stock market. Uh, but it's going to go back up. And do you know what all the, 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 the experts and Bloomberg is They're Bitcoin like gold. They're moving out of equities because of the great recession that we're going to go through. And they're putting their money in gold and in Bitcoin. You know that? Okay. Pardon me? The wallet? The old wallet? What are you going to do with the old wallet? Leave it for little Robin. But that, that old wallet don't drive out in his pocket. Anyway. So, Mr. Speaker, if you can have multinational corporations, you can have Switzerland, you can have the United States, you can have Canada, all of these developing countries, why can't Antigua be the leader in the Caribbean? And I am urging the Prime Minister, to continue with this vision, and not just this legislation that we bring in today, which is an excellent piece of legislation, but to also set up the cryptocurrency blockchain exchange here. Register it here before St. Lucia or Barbados, any of the other islands come. It was your idea. And get it done here, where you can have other companies like Calvin here. Come, register, and trade. I know it has a certain risks involved and you have to have central bank supervision, all that. And you will do it just like a comprehensive bill like this to have proper regulation. Because it's going to make a significant contribution to our local economy. Pardon me? Yes, most definitely. Now, Mr. Speaker, as I just want to say, the Honorable Member for St. John City East, my dear friend, come Nicholas, he was very instrumental and did a lot of work when he was at Cable and Wireless, and was very au okay when we had the internet, gaming, sports books, and he spoke about it this morning. 
It made a significant contribution back in the early 90s under Celeste Byrne. I served as the chief of staff, I served on the commission, and we had, Mr. Speaker, we had all the top names here. We had in Antigua, Victor Chandler, which is the largest fort betting up to today in the United Kingdom, with offices in Gibraltar, Australia, New Zealand, all over. A publicly traded company. They were right here. Actually, they moved one of their headquarters to Antigua. They even bought Casino Riviera. And I'll tell you the story. That place went to rot with coffee trees growing in it. And the receivers had to sell it, Grant Thornton, about two years ago to two local Antiguans. Because they had to leave. Why they had to leave? I'll tell you in a minute, Mr. Speaker. We had Playtech Corporation, which was a software development company, employed hundreds of Antiguans again. They're a big Canadian company, now a multi-billion dollar company in Canada, still existing. You know them, Minister. All the big players were here, Intertops, WWTS. We all know Bill Scott. Bill Scott was in Antigua, that short little guy. And upstairs of where um, Robin's office is, APUA, they rented two floors, employed nearly 600 Antiguans in those days. Plus they rented ACT building. I mean, Bill Scott, Mr. Speaker, the United States government put out an extradition warrant for his arrest. You know what they did? They used some old 1929 or 1949, sorry, 1949 wire tapping fraud legislation that's still on the books. And they charged every single person once they were a U.S. citizen that accepted bets online, bet on your football, your basketball, cricket, whatever, your sports, and they charged them and said it was illegal. And I remember Lester Bird had to send, I won't call his name, one of them, because the U.S. was so, so adamant that we, you know his name, he's back in Antigua now, very thriving business. We had to put him on a plane, on a plane, without even going through an extradition process. Because Sports Illustrated, you know that sports magazine, wrote it up, the Wall Street Journal, and they were putting sanctions on Antigua. They blacklisted us. They sent Rodney Gallagher here. They sent the U.S. ambassador here. Or everybody to meet with Celeste and so on and so on. And they blacklisted us. And let me say to you, <coughs> Minister, Comrade, um, member for St. John City East. You are incorrect. I beg to differ with you. It's not that we didn't have proper regulation back then. Every single one of those companies were registered and issued license under the Financial Services Regulatory Commission. We had the regulatory framework in place. So there was no justification. No, but you said it briefly that maybe now we have the but no, we had regulations. Pardon me? Yes. And then we, we introduced the legislation that still crippled us. But that's not a reason for them to shut our business down. But then PMW should, if they were right, we shouldn't be arguing now that they owe us the 220 million US. We should write it off. We should tell them, take it. Why did we take them before the WTO? Both Lester Bird and yourself have appealed. And now we are arguing. And won, we won twice, Mr. Speaker. Sorry for the side talk, I apologize to you. We won twice, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure you're aware. aware. Took them before the WTO, got two judgments. They owe us over 200 million US, going nearly 13 years. And might is right. We can't get no settlement. So Warren has tried. The previous Minister of Foreign Affairs, Charles Fernandez, have tried. This new Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Member St. Paul is trying. The Prime Minister have tried. They don't intend to pay it. They do not intend. And they crippled an entire industry that employed nearly 5,000 or more young Antiguan people. and paying them high wages. Not just the wages and the statutory deductions to the government and the contribution for education, levy, medical benefits, social security. What about all the buildings they rented from ACT? They built, let me tell you, Redcliffe Holdings. Sir, 
That building, Redcliffe Holdings, Mr. Speaker, where Abbey Building is, one of the owners, Bill Scott for WWTS, he is the single largest shareholder in that building up to today. With Bill Cooper, are you aware of that, Mr. Prime Minister? Mr. Bill Scott, who owned WWTS and had to sell and leave Antigua and sell his company to an Australian company, is the single largest shareholder in Redcliffe Holdings Limited. Do you, are you also aware, Mr. Prime Minister, that he purchased $10 million of Antigua government bonds and still has them? $10 million of Antigua government bonds. That's how patriotic the man is. And he doesn't live here no more. And he lives in St. Martin, but he was driven out of here, not by us, but not by no fault of his, but because they shut the whole industry down. So he's retired now in St. Martin, and he's done. He sold his company to a big Australian company, got maybe four, five hundred million dollars, and he's happy. But he still invests in the country. He built a building, he rents the building to Abib, and he also invests in our government bonds. So I just want to say, it, Mr. Speaker, that when the United States closed down our entire industry to protect their own casinos, you know, in Las Vegas, in Atlantic City, and on the Indian reservations, because online gaming is legal in the United States. It's legal for them, but it's not legal for us, a little poor black little donkey country. You mustn't have that money. The flight of capital must not leave the US and Las Vegas and, and um, Atlantic City. We must not create those industries, just like the CIP, Mr. PM, that they want to shut down and put all these regulations on us. So all we must have is tourism, all we must have is hotels to bring their tourist certification and we must be not innovative, not diversify, go back and plant sugarcane and cotton. That's what they want us to do. But we are saying that we are innovative, creative, entrepreneurial government and finding ways and means to di diversify our economy. And that is just my little contribution. I'm happy that the Prime Minister was able to, um, to clarify about having a headquarters and a physical headquarters here because I didn't get a chance to look through the entire bill and I, I, I thought that um, there was no requirement for that. But that is very good that they have to have a physical office here, employ people and not operate virtually from somewhere in the world. So I just want to commend this bill, compliment the government, it's very timely. And this is an industry that, as I said, it comes with risk. It's how you mitigate the risk, but it's an industry that is here to stay. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.